from the dust, the blood of the innocent, which we call fetus, cries out. If I'm not a person, then what am I? If we are pronounced dead when our heart stops, why are we not pronounced alive when our heart starts? 55 million lives aborted in the name of choice. Meet this couple, Hannah and Michael Boland, who rejected their doctor's advice, said no to the murder of their baby, said no to abortion, and they had no regrets for their decision. Hannah Boland was at her follow-up appointment. She was alone. Your husband isn't with you, the doctor asked her with great concern. Only a short while before, a pregnancy had ended in a miscarriage. But this pregnancy was different. It was out of the danger zone. The baby was already 20 weeks in gestation. Allison and Harry, Hannah's two toddlers, aged three and two, respectively, were going to have another sibling. I like having the husband or partner present in such situations. We detected a problem with your baby's scan, the doctor continued. There seems to be a problem with his brain. The baby's brain had not developed, the doctor explained. Nothing could be done medically to alter the situation. It was unlikely that he would be born alive. Even if he survived at the time of birth, he would live for just a few short, painful moments. Hannah was in for a total shock. She asked, who are we to say that the person is not worthy to be alive? Hannah and her husband, Michael, are both devout Christians who raised their family in a semi-rural area outside Sydney, Australia. Michael is the sole breadwinner, working as a mechanic specialized in elevators. Hannah is a stay-at-home mom who was taking care of their two toddlers. This diagnosis put their faith to the test. She was devastated. Hannah says, Bible gave them hope. She clung to the passage, He will not tempt you beyond your strength. The couple's main struggle was how to cope up with the uncertainties that lay ahead. Abortion was never an option for the Bolins. With our first child, we went through those questions because they can do prenatal testing. Those tests were a waste of time, she said. We knew that it was not something God would want us to do. They hopped from one hospital to another. Every doctor they met recommended an abortion. Hannah says one doctor said at the consultation, there is no hope for your baby, none. There is a 99.9% .9 chance of your baby dying immediately after his birth. It is likely that he will just gurgle a little and then die. I won't even be present at his birth. There's no point. The doctors also thought there was no point in giving the baby oxygen if he lived after birth. One doctor suggested simply letting the baby starve. Isn't it easier to justify murder when you cannot see the victim? Prayers and tears were all the couple was left with. They loved their son and wished to do what was best for him. They had to decide what that would mean. In the end, they decided to feed, love, and serve him. The one real struggle was resuscitation. Was it in his best interest to bring him back? Their final decision, we would not do anything intentionally to end Stephen's life. The day arrived. Three days of labor. There was anxiety in the air. Stephen was born. When Stephen was born, he stunned the theater staff with his loud, healthy cry. It was a far cry from the gurgling, dying cry they had expected to see. Their son looked healthy and beautiful. Tears rolled down Michael's cheeks. Family members trickled in and out to meet and cuddle the new baby. Stephen's brother and sister were excited to meet him, but they were too young to fully process what was going on. They only understood that he was very sick. Hours later, Stephen began to fuss, a signal that it was feeding time. The nurses inserted a feeding tube through Stephen's nose. It seemed to nourish and settle him. He was feeding. He was well. I would be able to take him home and care for him, Hannah rejoiced. However, the initial signs were misleading. Stephen began spitting up his food, and it became apparent that he was not assimilating any nutrition. It was only a matter of time. Hannah was searching for light 
despite seeing darkness all around. Hannah was tired and frazzled, not knowing how to handle a child that was slipping away. Her husband pepped up her spirits. He showed her how. He gently took his son and said, Well, mate, you're still here for a reason. And as long as you're still here, I'm going to serve you as best I can. He cradled him and swabbed his dry lips. It was a time to be completely selfless, which Hannah admits was difficult, especially after the long labor. She is ashamed to recount, here was my son dying, and all I could think about was how it was hard on me. During short intervals, Stephen stopped breathing, but would revive again. After several hours of cradling Stephen, Michael turned to his wife. Their son was gone. He slipped away in the arms of his father, close to his mother. He reached his final destination. In a way, their journey without their Prince Stephen started. It was the one-year anniversary of Stephen's birth. Hannah has written an account of his life in the book, 47 Hours with a Prince. She's getting trained to be a counselor. I want to help people in the way I have been helped, she says explaining that a Christian counselor helped her through many months of grieving that followed the death of Stephen. She hopes to help those with emotional illness, noting, the emotional side of us is just as prone to illness as any part of us. Her message is acceptance. We have to look at things through God's eyes. Otherwise, we will regret for the decisions that we make. Her book, 47 Hours with a Prince, is welcomed by the people. Hannah says even her friends say that they will give deep consideration to it. An angel wrote in the Book of Life, Hannah's Prince Stephen's date of birth, and then she whispered as she closed the book, too beautiful for earth. In the heaven's cradle, Hannah's Prince Stephen swings. When the angel rocks the cradle, the whole heaven sings a lullaby of love for him. Please like, comment, and share. Join us and change lives. Pleased to have you around. Blessed we are to get connected with you.